Let's take a look at the molecular geometry for H3PO4. This is phosphoric acid. So when we look at molecular geometry, we need to start with a valid Lewis structure. So this is our Lewis structure for H3PO4. You will note that the phosphorus here in the center has one, two, three, four, five pairs of electrons. So it has more than eight electrons, but that's okay. It can have an expanded octet. First thing we need to do is find the steric number for the phosphorus. So we're finding the molecular geometry with respect to the central atom, the phosphorus here. So we have one, two, three, four groups bonded to the phosphorus here. So our steric number is four, and all of these are covalently shared bonds. There's no lone pairs. Zero lone pairs, tetrahedral molecular geometry. We'd expect the bond angle to be 109.5. Let's try to visualize this in three dimensions. So the purple, that'll be our central atom. That's the phosphorus atom. We're going to add those four groups. One, two, three. They all spread out to be as far as they can from each other. And then we'll add that last oxygen there with the double bond. And we end up with a tetrahedral molecular geometry. And the bond angle should be 109.5, very close to 109.5. If we wanted to look at the electron geometry, since there aren't any lone pairs, the electron geometry, that would be the same as the molecular geometry. That would be tetrahedral. Back to our Lewis structure, we could also use the AXE notation to figure out the molecular geometry here for H3PO4. A, that would be the central atom. That's our phosphorus here. X, that's the number of atoms bonded to it. We have the one, two, three, four groups bonded here. And there are no lone pairs, so E would be zero. Often you just don't write the E. If we looked up AX4, we'd see that it is tetrahedral, just like we did with our tables. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry for H3PO4, phosphoric acid. Thanks for watching.